Hello friends, I'm Gitanjali Bodankar. I'm a maths and science teacher and the principal of MES Balchikshan Mandir English Medium School. This video is intended to bring some light on the use of hands-on activities. So today, let's talk about Ohm's Law. While I was teaching the students of 7th and 8th standard, I found that they were not very clear or confident about certain terms like potential difference, electric current. When asked, they said, yes, we know, we put on the switch and the bulb glows. Sometimes the bulb flickers, we put on the switch, the fan rotates. With the activities, the students could predict the relation between the current, resistance or voltage variation. They could even solve problems based on Ohm's law and ultimately they could connect a simple electric circuit. In this video, I will share with you my experience of teaching Ohm's law to my students. Before I started, I made sure whether my students knew about atomic structure, electricity, conductor, insulator and the measurement of units. Because in physics, the units of physical quantities is very important. Like for example, resistance unit is ohms, while current unit is ampere. I explained the relation between current and voltage in the next activity. For this activity, we need two transparent plastic bottles. Make two holes to them at the same height. Potassium permanganate solution, a transparent tube, a clamp and glue. Take a transparent tube and fix the clamp on it. Connect both the bottle by the tube and glue the ends. Fill one bottle completely with water. We will add potassium permanganate in this bottle and another up to the level of the tube so that we can see the water flow clearly. Now open the clamp and observe the level of water in both the bottles. You can have the assembly ready before the session. This activity is analogous to Ohm's law. Through this activity, I clarified the difference in water level is potential difference, that is voltage. The clamp represents the resistor and the flow of water represents the electric current, the flow of electric current. While I was taking this activity, I posed a few questions to the students. What happens with the water level when we open the clamp? What is equivalent to the flow of current in this analogy? What is the relation between the current and the potential difference, that is voltage? What will happen if we change the levels of water? We concluded the discussion stating Ohm's law. That is, the relation between voltage and current are directly proportional. The activity emphasized on potential difference. The next activity that I taken with my students emphasized on the role of resistors and established the convention of electric current. For the activity, we need a Ziploc bag, small tube, a rubber band, a small fan, two thermocol balls, a balloon, plastic transparent box and a clamp. Take the plastic box and make holes to it as shown and fix the plastic tube to it. Make holes to the same box to fix the paper fan with a needle like this. Now, connect the balloon to another tube using the rubber band. Fix the free end of the tube to the plastic box as shown. Inflate the balloon. Attach the clamp to the same tube. The air will not escape. Insert the Ziploc bag to the other end of the tube and seal it till the pipe. Open the clamp 
and observe that the bag will get inflated and the balloon will shrink. As the air passes through the box, the paper fan inside the box rotates faster. Again, this activity is analogous to Ohm's law. I clarified the difference between the amount of air in the balloon and the Ziploc bag is the potential difference, that is the voltage. The flow of air indicates current. After finishing this activity with the students, I posed a few questions to them as follows. What is equivalent to the flow of current in this assembly? What controls the flow of current analogous to the material in this assembly? What is the relation between the current that is flow of air in the activity and the resistor that is the rotating fan? Thus, we concluded the activities stating Ohm's law and its equations. I asked the students to summarize the Ohm's law and I found that they understood the topic very well and I was glad. I didn't stop at this. I conducted many more such hands-on activity like flowing charge, induced EMF and resistant pencils with my students during the off periods. The activities helped the students to grasp the concepts very well. These activities took only 10 to 15 minutes. The lesson plan is given in the description box. Since I've started using hands-on activities in my class, I can see the students' involvement in the science class has increased. These activities are more fun-loving for the students and it also clarifies the different concepts which are difficult to understand in science. So, let's make learning a meaningful and fun-loving session. Please try these activities with your students and get back to us whether the students have really understood the concepts and whether they loved doing those activities. Thanks for watching.